Hi everyone, it's such a great pleasure having you joining us for this presentation. I'm going to talk you through the process of building an application or a, in short form app and you're going to use a calculator to illustrate um, what you're talking about. So applications are what we utilize in our day-to-day -day activities. Um, for example, calculators for arithmetic reasons and uh, there are many more examples um, of applications in our day-to-day -day life. Um, so in this presentation, I'm going to talk you through the basic principles of uh, building a calculator using a programming language. And uh, we're going to go through the steps that are involved in making the desired graphical user interface. Um, so by way of example, if uh, this is my calculator, um, um, I've built it you know, to my taste uh, in different colors, as you can see, and uh, also roughly to a suitable um, size for my screen. And you can do this for your own um, reasons, like uh, maybe color preferences or just better aesthetics. Uh, and it's fully functional. For example, if we press some numbers like 25 and uh, take away, let's say six, we expect 19 and uh, that's all we get as the output. And uh, whatever we get on the screen, we can also clear. Um, it's fully functional for uh, um, numbers. So for example, if you want to get the square root of 81, you get nine as the outcome. And uh, we can use the special functions as well. Um, for example, if we look for the um, natural logarithm of one, uh, which is zero, um, we can look for the sign. If you just press sign, it gives an error message. But if you write the number first and look for the sign, you can actually get the correct figure. Um, you can see the sign of 90. And uh, this output is in radians, so you can always change to degrees um, as it suits your purposes. And we have the exponent function, for example, 5 uh, raised to the power of 2, and we get the correct response. So that's what you're trying to build in this presentation. Um, and uh, understand the process of allocating the functions, including the arithmetic and uh, geometric functions and uh, finally we're going to make a mention on how to transfer the programming code into an application that you can actually use um, so the first step in making a calculator is to have a mental picture of what you actually want to build and uh, this is where the design process comes in so when you design an application, you might wonder, what is it that I'm making? And uh, an application is simply a software program that's designed for a specific function. Um, for this presentation, you're using a calculator as an example. And uh, as you know, a calculator, we use it for arithmetic purposes or geometric reasons. We can use it to add small or large numbers. Um, and there are many more examples of applications. Uh, programs are essentially the instructions that uh, the software engineer or uh, the programmer puts into the application for the end user. So, for example, if you open your laptop and you know press on the calculator buttons, you, you don't really know what's happening behind the scene unless you actually built it. And that's what you're going to do today. So you're going to take a, a step and go behind the curtains to see how the software engineer essentially um, plans and writes the script for the calculator. And in this case, you're going to use the Python file. So it's .py file. Um, and once you build the script, you're going to create the software into an executable file and also create a shortcut or a, an icon on the desktop. So when the end user comes in, they only need to click at the icon which links them to the executable file within the computer and this 
um, executable file interacts with the operating system as well as the system software to give us what you call an output or a visual display like what you see as the numbers and that's what really the users are able to see so they're able to see the icon and the display but today we want to go behind the scenes and figure out what's actually happening in the process of building the application um, so between the calculator software and the system software we have what you call the application programming interface um, so um, in terms of our project i just want to take you through a few essentials in what you actually need to understand so starting with the design um, you need to have a mental picture of what you're building and uh, this is roughly what i want to build and uh, here we have the dimensions so my calculator will be 425 units wide and uh, 576 units in terms of length and this one i estimated based on my screen size and i just want something that uh, fits well with uh, the rest of uh, uh, my screen so this is what i have and uh, these are the dimensions in terms of planning um, in terms of the buttons this is how i like the buttons to be named and uh, these are the positions so this is in respect to the x and the y axis as well as the background colors so for example if you look at uh, the x raised to the power of y it's chocolate and it's appearing chocolate right there and if you look at the plus sign which is uh, right there it's magenta so i assigned different colors because that's how i'd like it to appear and uh, the other thing is to do the background of the screen so this is lavender and uh, that's what I, I actually thought of making a, a lavender output and uh, in terms of the numbers that i input they're purple um, and uh, when i divide that by five i get a purple on the screen and i can clear it so this is in terms of planning you should have an idea of um, what colors you'd like to use uh, while building your application so um, that's to do the planning and uh, i'll just go back to uh, the slide to highlight a few things in the planning process so the other thing that you need to do is to um, think about where everything lies essentially that's what it is in terms of planning and uh, my inspiration was from this japanese poem the iroha and uh, essentially it's what's considered a pangram as well as an isogram that means it has similar characters similar number of characters uh, and it creates a pattern and none of these characters are actually repeated if you look at it in hiragana so they're unique characters and uh, my calculator even though it's not essentially in, in blocks of eight as the iroha we essentially have uh, different colors so it's probably the iroha in colors you know just um, as an inspiration so my point is you can have a lot of variations in terms of what you're going to build and that's the the gist of this presentation to give you that option to actually build something different that you can use i mean if you can build your own it will be to your taste and it also gives you that uh, experience or satisfaction of actually getting hands-on in building your applications so um, let's go into the some of the key steps that you're going to run through today so you're going to think about the tools that you need and you're using python so you need the tk inter module we need the library such as the math and uh, for the file conversion you'll use cx freeze don't worry too much about it at the moment because we'll talk about it at the end and uh, again we talked about the windows so we have the mainframe you have the display screen and then the buttons or the widgets and uh, lastly we'll convert the program into an executable file so i'll just go into my python library and uh, start the process um, so usually just start on a new project um, and just before i go into that i'll give you for those who've not downloaded python before this just shows the um, where you can get the, uh, the software so if you go to the python uh, website just uh, www.python.org 
you can look at the downloads and look at what's suitable for your operating system for example we're using the mac operating system and uh, you can use the relevant version um, so it's really easy to use it's a really good program and uh, for most purposes um, it's open access so you can get also the um, commercial models if you want to build more complex ideas so um, once I'm in my programming language Python I need to name my project so um, for this purpose I'll just call my file uh, my calculator or calc in short um, calculator and uh, so I have my calculator as my project and I'll create the project in Python I'll go into uh, right click on Python go to new Python file and uh, I'll just call it the same name so it's my calculator it gives you a sense of ownership when you're building your own file um, we need to get a few resources for this particular library so the first step we do is uh, import the tools from tkinter um, so import everything so that's a command line and then i'll also need the math library so i need to import the math library um, the root uh, equals to tk and then we have the root as the main loop So this is uh, dot main loop. Um, so if you run this program, I'll just go to the terminal, and uh, I want to run my calculator. Dot pi. Um, so you can see we actually have a frame already, and. Uh, we can work with this, we can build on it. So I'll do a few more things in case of, in, instead of just TK, I want to give it a name. So I'll call my calculator, because it's, uh, my thought process is to have it in uh, many colors. So I'll just call uh, my calculator, like, uh, we'll call it calculator in colors. I'll put it in colors. And uh, I'd also need to decide on the geometry that takes us back to the planning aspect. Uh, I remember looking at the geometry. So my idea is to have the width of 425 units by 576 units. So I need to put in my geometry. Um, and uh, I'll put it as a string. So we have 425 as a width by 576 as a length and uh, the other thing I want to do at this stage is to keep it constant so I want to keep it at that size and uh, what I do I just put the root um, dot max size so it doesn't um, let me show you what I mean by that so at this stage if I run this program let me run it it um, that's my calculator we've already incorporated the title so calculator and colors but then uh, if I press on the expand button it blows out so I don't want that to happen because I just need a really neat calculator of the same size so what I do is to restrict the size of that so I'll just say root dot max size and uh, I'll describe the max size. So in terms of the width, uh, we have it as 425. So that's just how much I want it to be. And the height, I'll keep it the same as the dimensions. Um, 
So again, these are just commands that depend on your preference. So if you want something that blows up like that, you can essentially um, do whatever your preference might be. So that's the advantage of building your own application because you have that option to actually have what you desire. So you see if I blow it up now, it doesn't really go out of the way. It just stays more or less the same size. So that's essentially what we have as the, uh, the main frame. So the next thing I need to think about is the display. And uh, in terms of the display, I need an entry because you're going to display whatever entry you put in there. And it is in the root. Um, so display the entry, which is in the root. I need to think about the font, like what size of font would I like within the entry. And uh, in this case, I'd like to use display, uh, digital, sorry. I'd like to display the digital font. And uh, I'd like it to be size 75, according to the plan. Um, the other thing is uh, the color. So I'd like it to be, um, if we go to my plan, it will actually give me an idea of the color that I plan to have. And uh, I'd like it to be purple. So I'll just put my color. Again, these preferences can change according to what you'd like to have. Um, and the background, um, my background is lavender. So you can change your preferences to whatever you want. Um, once you have your commands in place, you need to figure out uh, where do you actually place the display? Like what is the position of the display? So display uh, the place. And uh, this is in respect to your plan. So as you can see, the display is at the very top. So it's at x is equals to zero and y equals to zero. So the x-axis is 0 and uh, the y-axis is 0. So that's where the display would be. Um, the other thing about this is uh, in terms of its dimensions. So the display I want it to be the entire um, width and uh, just about uh, um, about a fifth of the entire window uh, there about so it's about 116 units um, so those are my preferred dimensions for the display um, so let's see what you have for this particular command so far so if you run this program uh, my calculator um, we end up with the display which is lavender in color and you can actually enter whatever number we want in this display but as you can see the numbers are from left to right whereas in a calculator usually it's from right to left so how to sort that out we go to the command here and we use justify and uh, we'd like it to come from the right so that changes and uh, if I close this program and uh, try it once again uh, to run it. So, uh, okay. um, so when I run it again and I enter the same numbers, you can see it's now from right to left, which is what I'd like to have. So my display screen is in place. What I need to do now is to place the buttons. So these are the buttons of the widgets. And again, it really helps to have a plan in place because you have a rough idea of where you want the numbers to be and uh, the special functions. So you have your design in place. So what I'm going to do is uh, we'll walk around with the, the sign function and try and uh, um, place the sign function to start with. So um, let's go to the buttons. So I'll start with the, um, these are the buttons. Um, our first button, if you look at, we go back to the plan, is the sign button. 
right there. And uh, in terms of its location, you can see it's at position 116 in the y axis, but the same zero on the x axis because the height of the screen, the display screen, is 116. We just want the sign to be immediately below that and at position zero on the x axis. So, what we do, um, we describe the button sign. Um, so, button sign. And uh, we need to define what it is. Um, so it is a button and uh, in terms of uh, the button, so we've identified what it is, we've identified uh, um, where we want to put it, which is in the root. And uh, the next thing we need to think about when we're doing um, the button is a font, like how do you want the button to appear like what are the dimensions so I'd like to again have a digital font um, you can change that to your preference and I'd like it to be size 40 um, so the other thing about the button is uh, what you want to be written on that particular button so to execute that command we need to write text that's written on that particular button and in this case it's a sign button um, then the other thing that uh, we look at so we put the text uh, what color would I like to have my button so that's a foreground and uh, in this particular case if you go to my list the sign is maroon so that's what I'll put as my preferred color and uh, um, so we have the foreground, we've figured out the texts um, and then uh, we need to place this button. Now where do you want it to be? So we say um, button sign, place. So there are many ways to do this. There are the commands that you can use. You can use grid. You can use place, so there are just variations of what you can do. So this button, we'd like to place it at position x equals to zero, and uh, position y, as we saw earlier, is uh, 116 units below x. So position y will be 116. So that's what you're going to have as uh, the position of y. Uh, in terms of the button dimensions, so the width is uh, 85 and uh, the height um, from memory it was 96, yeah, and that's correct. So it's 96 in height and 85 in width. So we'll put in 96 and uh, we've already known its dimensions and we know its place. So let's try and run the button. So, I'm in the program and uh, see how the buttons are placed. So when you run this program, you can actually see the sign button is in its right place. It's a button, but when you press on it, you don't have an executable function yet. So that is because we don't have, um, we've not executed the functions of the different buttons that we have. So I'm going to give another example of uh, how we can actually place these buttons and give it function. So let's try and uh, work with another one more button and then I'll quickly um, just expedite the other buttons to make sure they're in place. So again, let's try button, uh, button one as a button. So we put it in the root. And I'll use this button to illustrate how we can actually assign function to the numerical buttons. So the font is the same. Um, yeah, the font is uh, digital. Um, and then uh, we have size 40. Um, we want the text written on that button to be number one. So it's a string of one. And uh, the foreground. So I'll just go back to my plan once again. 
um, but on one is maroon again so the same colors um, the sign button so once you have uh, these instructions in place um, I need to place my button so you have button one um, dot place uh, in terms of the x-axis it's uh, 85 units from the sign button so it's um, x will be 85 because the width of each button is 85 so we put this as 85 and then uh, in terms of its height um, or rather the x position the y position so it's again one step down so it's 116 plus 96 which is the height of each button and uh, that gives us uh, 212 so 212 and then the other functions are similar so it's width is the same as uh, the other buttons because they're all uniform and its height is the same as the other buttons as well so we've put it in place and let me just um, uh, run this program to see if we have it in the correct place um, and there we go we have the number one in the correct place so what you do uh, we have number one already in place and we need to assign function to uh, this particular button and uh, to assign function we need to give instructions that uh, um, you actually display a uh, function to this button. So in order to do that, we'll go to our display right here and uh, put in text variable. And text variable equals to output. Um, so that's what it is. And uh, we come up here, we need to define what this output is. So uh, if you go in our command, so output, um, this will be a string variable. String variable, and uh, its input is a null string or an empty string. So when you do that, um, this should give us um, a number when you press on that particular button. So we come back to our button and give it a command. Um, so the command that we give is uh, lambda. Um, and then uh, we need to press the button. Um, so what happens when you actually press this button? That's what this command means. So we write lambda, um, we write uh, press, which is uh, you know our command to press this particular button and uh, when you press we expect it to write one as uh, the string um, so what you need to do again is to define um, what press means so we come back to our program and uh, we need to define um, what the press instruction is so we'll go up here and uh, define press uh, which is a button so we put it as b um, so um, what you need to think about at this stage is a uh, it's a global input and uh, when you click this input it's uh, the result that it gives you is from the button whatever button it is so it could be one two or whatever number it is and uh, we set the output as uh, the input so with this command we should actually get an output of that particular number so let's try and do that here um, so python my calculator
And uh, so we have our numbers. Let's press it and you can see our output is actually one. So that's what it means. Um, we have not assigned signed the function, so one is already working. So that's really what we do. Um, so we're just going to do the same for all the other buttons that we have. So these, these buttons include um, from the sign to the equal buttons. And uh, I'm just quickly going to do the same process for all the buttons. Um, but as you can see, all you can do right now in our program is just to enter the number. We cannot clear it, so we need to define what the other functions are. And uh, I'll show you how we do that in a moment. So let me just put the other buttons as well, and then uh, we'll take it from there. So running this program once again, just want to check the positions of the buttons. So there we go, um, and uh, we have a small problem because these ones are not showing clearly the last few buttons. And let's see where the problem lies. So it's cutting off. It probably shows that we have a smaller screen, and just want to confirm that we're actually on track with our dimensions. So it was five seven six. Yeah, that was that's correct. Um, um, so it's the dimensions are right. We have 425 by 576. That's the geometry. I just want to make sure all the buttons have the right dimensions. Oh yeah, this should be. Um, is it 96? Yeah, 85 by 96. Because it shows some buttons might be too large for that screen. I'm just double checking my work to make sure everything is in order. Mm, yeah, at first value it looks alright. Like there's none that's exaggerated and they're all in their correct places. So let me look at my graphical user interface again. Alright, there we go. So what I need to do is uh, define the minimum size as well. I think that's the reason why this was happening because I didn't, I didn't define the minimum size. So let me go to um, my command up here. So I define the maximum size. And then I'm going to go to root minimum size. Um, so I want it to be no less than the units, so 4 to 5 and uh, height. 576. So let me try and run it once again. I hope we don't hit the same problem again. So my calculator. Yeah, so that problem is solved. So it's not cutting off the digits at the bottom, and that's what I want. So you don't want it to be any less than um, the dimensions that we have. And uh, if you press the buttons, um, let's see, uh, we're still not getting an output. All right, so um, what you need to do is define the press. Um, so in terms of the command, so this should be press. Um, you define that. Should work now. So we have Python, uh, my calculator, goodbye. Yeah, so if you press the numbers, you can actually see we're getting the desired output. Yeah, so we've already done that. We need to define the other buttons like clear and equal. So that's what we're going to go to do next. And uh, I'll just go to the clear button, which was button C. And there we go. So 
uh, button C and give it a command um, which um, let's call it arrays and uh, what I do is define arrays so I'll just go up here and uh, define what arrays means um, so it's pretty easy to do uh, once you go to um, the top of your screen so you just um, put it as global input um, once you have a global input the input that you put in is a null string and uh, then you need to set the output as an input Um, that just means when you press the erase button you're going to erase whatever is on the screen and then uh, you start all over again so if you run this program uh, my calculator um, and then for example we press the numbers and press C, you can see we have an empty screen, empty screen, so you can clear. Um, still it's not fully functional because, um, for example, if we write 5 minus 3, um, we're not getting a response. You need to define these other buttons like the equal signs. So to define the equal sign, again, we go to the equal button, which was button EQ, which was at the very end. There we go. So here, put in a command, and uh, we can put it as equal EQ. Um, we come up here and define what that means. So we'll just um, go up here and define what EQ is. Um, so equal gives um, gives you the result. So it's a global input. Um, so that's with the equal sign and uh, the other thing that it does is uh, um, the results are evaluated so the results um, evaluate uh, so you just write it like that results evaluate which are the input whatever results you put in there and then you need to input as a string variable And this is a string variable of the results and uh, we need to output set the output as a, um, the results so um, what that means is if you put in whatever numbers um, this is going to be evaluated and then you get your results so let's run this program and uh, see how we go with the same arithmetic functions. Um, so we have Python, my calculator. Um, I'll define equal, I need to put in a colon right there. That's it. So Python I call Q later and py. So if I do for example five plus nine and press the equal sign you get the fourteen. And uh, we already defined clear, so you can clear. And uh, we can try different numbers, for example, 7 multiplied by 3, we expect 21, and you're getting the correct input. Um, so that's with the arithmetic functions. Um, we need to define the special functions, like uh, these ones as well. And uh, how we do that is, uh, again, um, just 
define the arithmetic functions. So um, I'm just going to define the special functions. So those are the buttons like the sine, the cosine, the tangent, and the natural logarithms. Um, so that's where our math library um, come into place because these special functions are actually um, in the math library. So um, we need to, uh, let's say, uh, start with the sign. So we need to define what sign is. And uh, sign as a function, again, this is a global input. And uh, the result, it's, it's very similar to what you have. So result, um, this will be evaluated as the results. Um, so whatever input you put in there are going to be evaluated. And uh, these results, um, we expect them to be from the math library. So these are in the math library. And uh, this to do the sign function in the math library. So that's the command that we give. And uh, we input a string variable. of the results and uh, we set the output as the results so that gives us the sign function so we'll just go to the sign button uh, which was the very first one and we need to put in a command um, so the sign function, if you remember correctly, it's a, a, a ratio. So the sign is essentially a ratio. And uh, it's a ratio of uh, in a right angle triangle. So if you divide the opposite by the hypotenuse, you get the sign. So I'll just call this as a sign. And I'll just illustrate that to you as we look at the trigonometric functions. So if you look at a right angle triangle, um, angle theta, its sine is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So that's what it is. Cosine is the adjacent by the hypotenuse and the tangent is the opposite divided by the adjacent. So these are the special functions that we have. And uh, these are the logarithms as well. I'll just make a mention of them as well. So for example, if the exponent of p is q, um, if you raise, sorry, if you raise p to the power of q, you get r. So it means the logarithm of r to the base of p equals to q, or that's the exponent. And uh, this just defines the different mathematical aspects. And there are a few examples here. For example, if you raise 10 to the power of 2, you get 100. So the logarithm of 10, of 100 to the uh, base of 10 is equals to 2. And there are many more examples that we can run through. So that's what we're trying to um, assign in the special functions. So we've already put sign as uh, the command here. Um, so let's try and uh, uh, run our program uh, with sign and see how the special, special functions are. So if you run this function here, um, and uh, for example, um, the sine of zero is zero, as you can see. Uh, and these are in degrees radians. So uh, the sine of 90, it's 0 0.89, uh, that's what it is. So again, uh, radians are just a measure of uh, angles. So if you look at uh, Um, again, the radians 
and I'll just take you through my slides once again. I think it's in the PowerPoint. Um, so in the allocation of special functions, there we go. Um, so the radiance, 360 degrees radiance, uh, uh, sorry, 360 degrees are two pi radians, and you can easily convert the radians into degrees um, by dividing by 180 and multiplying by pi. So the units of measurement that we get uh, by default in Python are in degrees radians, but I'm just mentioning you can convert this later based on your mathematical needs. So you need to define the other functions as well, the cosine, the tangent, and the natural logarithm. Um, they're very similar to what you already have, so I'll just copy and paste. Um, and uh, this is just a replica of uh, what you've already discussed. We have assigned all the special functions. Let's see how we go with it. So here we go. Um, I'm just going to run it once again. Um, so for example, here if we again try and work out the sign, you can see getting a response. Uh, the cosine of 90, we're getting a response. Um, the natural log of, uh, of 1 is 0, so we're getting 0. And uh, if we raise 2 to the power of 3, again, you're getting a response. So we've allocated all our arithmetic functions into their respective spots. And uh, this is a fully flight calculator at the moment. Uh, let me see, we have the square root as well. I don't remember if we actually worked on it. No, we haven't. So you need to sort out the square root. Um, so let's go to the square root. Uh, there we go. So here is a command. Um, I'll just put it as square root. And we need to define what it is. So this is uh, math dot square root. Yeah. So that's it. Um, I think that's all it is. So um, just checking the square root function. Yeah. There we go. So this is a fully fledged calculator. And uh, we can virtually use it for uh, whatever function that you want to do. Um, so let's say 39 divided by 3, expect 13, and there we go. Square root of 13, you're getting a number. Um, so that's essentially what it is. And uh, we can use this for whatever purpose you want to do. Um, so the only problem is we're getting an error message here when we enter like um, incorrect commands. So for example, if you just press a button uh, without um, without any clear instruction, for example, if we just press the natural logs and there's no number, we're getting a, an error on the script itself, but not. Um, on the screen. So you can actually change this by what we call the try and accept method um, so that we actually get an error message when we enter an, uh, an erroneous uh, data set. So that's so easy to do. What we'll do is just go back to our script that we've already written here and uh, we'll, we'll be able to define what this uh, try and accept is um, within our command. So I'll actually go back to the equal sign. Um, so what you do here is write try. 
so they'll try that um, and then uh, we got the input we got the output and then if there is an incorrect entry we need to accept uh, that's what it is and uh, in the accept function we output that set and uh, this is we want a display of error so instead of the error on our script it should actually show um, that there is an error when uh, the person um, writes whatever is erroneous you should see that on their screen not in our script so um, so that's what we do with the try and accept method and um, this is actually we can do this for all the functions um, that we are looking at so um, let's look at the sign as well and do the same so the this one will be very similar so what you do is try We'll try to uh, run that arithmetic, and uh, if there is an error on the part of the user, we should show them that it is their fault. And then again, we set the output to um, give us the error message, and then we we'll also go back to an R string. So it gives us an empty string at the end of it. So that's that's what we do um, when we actually set the error. So I should have done the same here as well. So we should once you experience an error, we should go back to an empty empty space so that we can start another function. So that's what it means. I'm just going to um, you know copy and paste this. So we need to do this for the other functions as well. For example, now if I put a square root of negative 5, which doesn't exist, you see I get an error message, and that's what it's meant to be. Again, if I just press a number, like, you know, for no reason, because I didn't enter any value and I want its tangent, it gives me an error message. So in a nutshell, that's really um, what it is. We can use our calculator for whatever purpose, 4 by 5 um, equals to whatever number it is. Um, we can use the bracket function. Um, um, why did that happen? So let me just go through that again. 4 by 5. 4 by 5. Um, minus 5. Yeah, that looks alright. Alright, so the bracket function essentially um, also helps us compute the different um, uh, math so you can use that and still you know get a result of what it is um, so that's really what my calculator project is about the calculator in many colors as you can see um, so in summary um, that's um, what the project is about and you can build it to your taste as you can see I've literally chosen the color of my buttons the color of my background as well as the output that I want. Um, I'll just make a very brief mention on how you can change this into an executable file. Uh, what that means is at the moment we have the script written um, in Python. So here we go. That's my script. 
And for me to run the calculator, I literally need to go back to my script and then type in Python uh, the file where it is. And uh, that's when it brings it up and then I can use it. And uh, in the event that I actually close this script, so if, for example, if I close that, I really can't use my calculator. So that's, that's a limitation of having such a program. So you need to convert it into what you call an executable file. And there's, that's a very easy thing to do. So there are different methods that you can use, like the pip method, whereby you just install the auto py to xe, to ex, sorry, and run the command. It converts that into an executable file on your operating system. Or you can use the CX freeze module within Python, or uh, you can install the py2 app. So these are some of the methods that you can use to convert your file into an executable file. Um, so in a nutshell, um, my project on the calculator of many colors, just to show you um, how you can tailor make your application depending on your specific needs. You can use different colors for the graphical user interface. Um, I also got this feedback um, from my wife that, you know, sometimes you need to have gentle colors because uh, I tried to use cyan blue and um, I ran it by her. She told me it was really, you know, burning to the eyes and you don't want that on your user's calculator. So it's good to have some support system and, you know, feedback. So thank you very much, honey. Um, so once you get feedback, you can actually make it user friendly and hopefully um, use it for different purposes and uh, make your audience happy. Um, a colored calculator might be, you know, aesthetically appealing and uh, more attractive, especially for younger users or those who might not really be inclined to arithmetic or mathematic functions. They might find it really enjoyable using something that's friendly to the eyes. And uh, we've also looked at ways of integrating the advanced arithmetic functions into the graphic user interface. And uh, of course, you want to make it functional, so you need to change it into an executable file. That brings me to the end of this presentation. I would like to thank you so much for uh, taking time to listen and uh, hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.